Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers workshop. Today in the workshop, if you need to find your bearings, you're going to have to make them. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, making the bearings for the brake shaft. So, how'd you go from a nub in a brass like that to get in? Two brass bearings. Right, a little bit out of sequence this time. I've already made them, but let's go into the video now and you'll see what I did to do it. All right, guys, I'll start playing the video now because it's all set up and ready to grow. Here we go. Right, guys, set up in the lathe. Bit of brass. This one's almost got what I need on the end of it here, so a uh, bit of a lucky find in the scrap. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this to the right length of course, going to face it off, uh, we're going to get it down to the right diameter, we're going to take get rid of all this scum on the outside, bit of a turn, turn that off, we're then going to drill our 14 mil hole all the way through, we're going to part it off, uh, we're then going to flip it round in the jaws and tidy up the parted off face and then we're going to bore it to fit the bar because of course my bar is supposed to be 13 mil and uh, to like 14.1 so I'll be using the little boring bar again just to take slowly slowly bits out and once I get this to the right diameter and a 14 mil hole through then uh, uh, I've got a second one to produce but I'll, I'll probably batch these and make kind of the two blanks first put one on top of the lathe headstock and then I'll won't show you that I won't bother filming it I'll bring you back when I get the first one when I get them both done, I get the first one back in the chuck, but the other way around. Okay, guys, let's get some. Let's have some fun. Let's get some machining of brass done. I get the tool on there. Right, so, wind in, wind out. Let's get this tidied up. Okay, guys, here goes. have a quick check on the depth at the moment not really too critical I can always shorten that out later on just wanted to get that end faced off let's have a quick look at that that is going to be 10 point three by the look at things 10 point yeah 10 point no, maybe even 10 point yeah 10 point two five Okay, so I'll leave that as it is at the moment. It's got a quarter of a mil to come off. Now we just need to get the diameter down to 19 mil. So again, touch off, run up and clean it off a few times. Here goes. Cleaned off all the old machining. Let's have a quick check. Need to get this down to 19 mil. Our focus. We're at 19 points. 
Nope, not quite five. 19.4. By the look of things. Yep, 19.4. I really want to get this down to about 18.9. So it's a push fit into the hole it's got to go into. So that's going to give me what the 0.5 of a mil. So let's go that. And take it off in small bits. Okay, here goes. Going by the dials on the lathe, that was 0.4 of a mil. Let's have a look. It should get us down to 19, and then we can just put on 0.1 on the dials and just take the slightest bit off. Oh, okay. Uh, that's going to be 18.9, I think. Let me just remeasure that. Hang on. Okay, that's a nice top. Let's have a quick look. A bit easier on the camera, to be honest. 18 points. Come on, focus. 9.5. Ooh, right. I just need to take a tiny little bit off. It's going to be literally taking dust off, is this? Let's just move the. I'll slide in about that far up. Here we go. Sure wasn't much that came off, that is for certain. So let's have another ream measure. Oops, get that up back on there, come on. Another hot day in the workshop. Is he here sweating my tail off? Right, let's have a look at that. 18 point. Yep, I'll call that 18.9. Camera's really useful for this, it's actually magnifying these readings. So yeah, 18. Point nine. Yep, that'll do us. Right. Okay, so just get this tool out of here. Wind the cross light out of the way. No, 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 no. Hang on, I've still got to clean up the outside first, haven't I? Let's put that back on there. Let's run this up towards the jaws a little bit. And we'll just clean that off again. It's going to touch off. And Take a cleaning cut till we get a nice, bright, shiny surface all the way around. So now we'll get this 14 mil hole drilled. Get rid of that lathe tool. Set up with a center drill and the drill chuck. Let's see if I can remember to turn it up this time. I've got the chuck here in my fingers, so it should happen. My dear old dad taught me many years ago. No longer with us, unfortunately. He was a great man. He was to me anyway. The, the drill chuck has three holes in it, same as a lathe chuck, and that they're there for a reason, so you should use them all, or at least two. So there we go. Right, let's get this 14 mil hole drilled. <laughs>
right, so that's us up to 10 mil. So I'm just going to slow the lathe down. I take it down to, what should we do? Uh, let's take it down to 550. I think even 700 is going to be a bit high. Let's have a look at that. think to give this the best possible chance I'm going to have to uh, bore this out now while it's still so everything at this end and the hole in the frames remains concentric let's just have a quick check yeah no nope, definitely still not fitting right so uh, Wind in, put the tool into the hole, get the machine running. Uh, yeah, to take it back up the speed a bit. Come on, into gear, thank you. Feels about right. And then uh, pour it out slowly, slowly till we hit, hit a size that will just fit that uh, um, bar, the brake shaft. Give that a try again. Sneak up on it. No point. Going like the clappers at it. Ooh, man, we are close. We are close. Right, drop that boring bar back on. Uh, let's go. Let's try for that much. Let's try taking out point 0.1 on the board and we'll just go slowly. <laughs> Check again. <laughs> That'll do it. Look, at that's it. That's what we wanted. Again, it's only a brake shaft. Doesn't need to be any more than that. Right, now I'm just going to grab the countersink. So I can countersink that hole. Put that in the drill chuck. There we go. 
Get that out of the way. Just put a little can of sink on this side. There we go. That's it. And if you guys notice, but I've got a new camera position. I used to be filming over there and up there, but now I'm filming literally from over the tailstock. Hopefully this will give you guys a bit of a better view. And uh, yeah, I'm going to drop that speed down again. It doesn't need to be that fast. So we're going to go down to a C3. There we go. There's a zero flute planter sink. Very nice. That will do me nicely. Right. Let's change over now to the boring bar. Sorry, not the boring bar. Duh. Parting tool. Check my notes so I can see what we've got to do. So, the total thickness of this thing needs to be 13.2 once it's parted off. Actually, no, I've still got to check that length, haven't I? Let me just have a look, see where we're at. We are at, we need to be 10. Oh, we're 10 and a half. Yes, we measured 10 and a half, didn't we? Yeah, 10 and a half. Got half a mil to take off first. Right, sorry. Let's get this sorted now. Get over to the block here again. There, wind in. Touch off. There we go, come on out. Half a mil is going to be... Uh, that much, I think. Let me get this to zero. There we go, hang on, touch off. Get that round to zero. Half a mil will be 25 graduations on the dial, on the compound. Not that that's going to make too much difference, I don't think. Let me have a quick check. Uh, yeah, half a mil on the compound, 25 divisions, yes. Right, here we go. I think I've just managed to take all my chamfer off, so I might just need to redo that. Get this out of the way. Right, there we go. Let's have a measure. I can always make it deeper if I have to. Although, as I've said before, the brake shaft. Anywhere close. Oh, look at that. Then mill on the knocker. There we go. Right. So go back to the back to the parting off tool. There we go. Change the speed again. There we are. Back up. Mm -hmm. sound right, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. Back to 1200 now. Tip of this boring, uh, boring bar, I keep calling it a boring bar, it's a parting tool, is 2. Point something. Hang on. I think it's 2.6. That off. Got a quick look. 2.5. Six, can't be right. Let me just do that again. Right, let's have another look. 2.5, there we go, 2.5 mil. So, what we're gonna do, line back in, move that forward till we make contact, which is there. I put that onto zero, put the dial onto zero. Right, now then, 2.6 mil on the compound is 130 divisions. So if I go around to 127, 28, 29, 30, 
All right, that should now line up here, and it does. So I can zero down again. Now, 13.2, let's say 13.4, so I can allow for a little bit of cleanup. Once I part it off, it's 15 whole turns, five, sorry, five whole turns, 15 divisions, and 20. So five, 15, five whole turns and 35 graduations. Right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and 35 on the dial should give me 13.4. Have a quick check on that just to be on the safe side. Just have a numb nut check, sanity check, some people call it. That's the side of the tool to the end of the bush, and I just whacked that on the drill chuck, so that's knocked it well out. Let's do that again. Man, it is warm today. Unfortunately, the fan I've got in the workshop makes a lot of noise. Otherwise, it would be running, but that would distract you guys. Right, let's have a look at that. Should be around 13.4. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. Okay, right. Let's part this. Let's part this off. Uh, I need something to catch it with. There we go. Make sure everything's tight. Right, saddle down. That's all running. This is. Yeah, just wind that out a little bit to give me a bit of room. I'm going to catch this with my scriber, so it's probably going to be pretty hot. But anyway, here goes. Stop in there once the cut is started. I'm just going to put a couple of chamfers on just so it saves me a job later. There we go, part enough. If you got not too different, I know a lot of people seem to struggle with part enough. Right, let's have a look, see at this, get this into view for you guys. There we go. And you can see there's the remnants of the parting off, which I'll just turn away shortly with the chamfers. This is red hot, it's burning my fingers, so I'll keep it moving. Right, I'm just going to get another one to this stage, then I'll put it back in the chuck and I'll bring you back at that so that you can see me just finishing this edge off. All right, guys, I'll get the next one done to this stage. Oops, get it back in frame, back in center. There we go. Yep, so that hole fits the back, fits the right shaft. All right, guys, see you in a bit. Righto, guys, that's me back. Got two of the little bearings made now. Just gonna show you how we finish off one of them. So I'm just gonna take this little, this remain of the uh, uh, parting off, off, and then just thin the, just clean that top face up. And then I'm going to just run the uh, countersink in a little bit just to uh, make it neat and tidy and no sharp edges. I will also probably just run a file over that top, cut that outer edge as well, just to make sure, again, no sharp edges. Right, there, guys, so machine set on 12, 1200 RPM, tools in place, all locked down. Here we go.
There we go. That's that done. Take it out. Let's zoom you out a bit as well now. There we go. So, all nice and clean. Two of those together. Right, I'll just pop these into the frames and then we'll take a look and I'll bring you back. All right, guys, see you in a bit. Okay, so here's the two bearings with the, uh, the flange on the outside on both of them. They, did, they were just a little, a nice light finger press fit. Shaft went through nice and easy. I've just tightened up the grub screws on the uh, brake arms. So you can see we have one over there, one over here. Oops, crazy. That one's still a little bit loose, but never mind. It's only temporary, just to show you guys. So when in use, when the locomotive is running, these will be up like that, or rather up is down. This connects to the brake handle in the, in the cab. And as you can see, you can imagine these are the brake shafts that I just made. So as you release the brakes, they, these arms now move back. This will pull the brakes off. And as you tighten them up, it'll move the brakes, the brake beams and then the brake arms and everything further forward, forward. Right. Now, there we go. This is a little bit of a longer job than I expected it to be. So I'm going to call this video to a close. It's going to be half an hour as it is anyway. And uh, I'll be back in the next one. Just give me a tick. Okay, guys, I'm going to call this video to a close. Two little brass bearings. Small job, seems to take a long time, but is it a long time really? What you've just watched, about 30 minutes worth, was pretty much real time. Uh, didn't edit out much of that at all, as you probably realise. Two little brass bearings, nicely made. They fit the frames, the brake shaft fits through. So, right, the brake arms themselves are taking longer than I expected, that's for sure. So the brake arms are going to go into a part three, which will hopefully be the next video. So I'll bring this one to a close, guys, by saying like I normally do. If you can find it in your heart and soul, to give me a like, a subscribe, and maybe even hit the bell just for notifications for when the new videos come out. That would be greatly appreciated. I do appreciate the support that I've got from all of you who subscribe and even watch this channel. So if you're just a watcher but not a subscriber, please consider being a subscriber. All right, guys, I'm going to call this one, to, this video to a close now. Uh, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.